Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to learn how to take measurements of length using a meter stick, volume using the graduated cylinder, and mass using the digital scale. So let's jump right in and start off talking about how we're going to measure the length of object using a meter stick. And when we start using the meter sticks and when we start taking the measurements of things, the very first thing we need to do is take a look at uh, the unit in which the instrument that we're using to take the measurement is measured. For example, if we take a look at this meter stick here, we see that the measurement uh, is being calibrated in centimeters. All right, So each one of this, these bigger lines here, represents a centimeter. We have zero centimeters, one centimeter, two centimeter, three centimeter. And then if we take a look right here, we have 10 millimeters in between each centimeter. So the smaller little lines are millimeters. And if we take a look at our meter stick here, it's important to first figure out before we even use it, uh, the level of precision of the instrument that we're using. So if we take a look at the level of precision of this meter stick or ruler right here, we can see that it is precise to the millimeters, right? It's precise to the millimeters. These little, little lines right here are millimeters and these bigger ones right here are centimeters. All right, so if we want to determine the pencil's length to the hundredths place, how do we do that? Well, let's take a look. If we take a look right here, it, it looks like we know for certain that this pencil is at least eight centimeters. All right, so we know with 100% certainty that it is eight centimeters in length. And if we take a look here, it's 8.1, it's 8.2, it's 8.3, it's 8.4 we know with 100% certainty that this pencil's length is 8.4 centimeters. However, what we can now do is we can now estimate, we can now estimate this place right here, right? The hundredths place right here, right? So if we take a look, it's 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, 8.4, and it's not quite 8.5. So if we take a look, this red dotted line here, it's barely before the halfway mark right here. So we're going to call this a nine. Right? It's almost touching this right here. So if we want to determine the pencil's length using the hundredths place, we would say that this is 8.49 centimeters. And the eight and the four are measurements that are 100% certain. And the nine, there's a little bit of uncertainty in this hundredths place measurement. We kind of had to estimate. All right, so the pencil's length here is 8.49 centimeters. Let's take a look at another one. Okay, let's take a look at this one. It says to determine the pencil's length to the hundredth place once again. So let's take a look. We know for certain that this pencil is 5 centimeters in length. 5 centimeters in length. We also know that it's 5.1, 5.2. And if we get really close to the screen and take a look, we can see that it is definitely 5.3. And if we take a look at this red dashed line here, we can see that it looks just a little bit past this 0.3. So we'll call this 5.31. Now, if you said this was 5.32, that would be acceptable also because this measurement right here has a level of uncertainty. We had to estimate the hundredths place in our measurement here. But we know with 100% certainty that the pencil's length is at least 5.3 centimeters. And this right here, we had to estimate. All right, so the pencil's length here is 5.31 centimeters. Let's take a look at another one. All right, let's take a look at this one. It says to determine the pencil's length to the hundredths place once again. And if we take a look, we know with 100% certainty that this pencil is going to be 3 centimeters in length. Furthermore, we know if we take a look, 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, 3.5, and it's not quite 3.6. So we know with 100% certainty that the pencil here is 3.5 centimeters in length. However, this is the tenths place, and we want to determine the pencil's length to the hundredths place. So what we now have to do is get real close and take a look here and estimate the hundredths place. So if we take a look, it looks like it's not quite 3.6 and it's a little past the halfway point, so we'll call this 3.57 centimeters. And once again, this place right here has a level of uncertainty. We had to estimate this right here, and we know with 100% certainty that the, the, the pencil's length is 3.5 centimeters. All right, 
Let's take a look at one final one. Okay, let's take a look once again. It says to determine the pencil's length to the hundredth place, we take a look here. And if you pause this, go ahead and try to figure this out before I do. I'll give you a couple seconds. All right, so if we take a look here, it looks like the pencil is going to be 9 centimeters with 100% certainty. It looks like it's going to be 9.7 centimeters with 100% certainty. And if we take a look, uh, it's a little bit past the 7. So I'm going to say this is a 2. 9.72 centimeters would be the length of this pencil right here. Once again, the hundredth place is uncertain. We had to estimate that. However, right here, the 9 and the 7 are, uh, are measured with 100% certainty. All right, let's take a look at how we're going to use a graduated cylinder now to measure the volume of uh, different liquids. All right, let's now figure out how we can measure the volume of different liquids using uh, a graduated cylinder. So we have a graduated cylinder here that's filled with water and a graduated cylinder here that's filled with water. And the first thing you'll notice is that if you get down eye level uh, with the graduated cylinder and the level of the water in this cylinder here, you will see what is called a meniscus. The meniscus here is kind of this uh, bowing or uh, concave little line where the water uh, meets or is inside of the cylinder here. It's caused by the hydrogen bonds in the water molecule that we'll talk about later on uh, in a different video. However, this right here is called a meniscus and we always want to take our measurements when we're taking measurements of water in a graduated cylinder from the bottom of the meniscus. So it's important to get eye level with that meniscus and take a look. And secondly, what we always want to do is we want to figure out how our graduated cylinder is, is calibrated. And if we take a look, yes, we see that this is milliliters. However, if we take a look, this is 2, this is 4, this is 6, this is 8. And we need to figure out what each one of these in between is. So if we take a look and count these very closely, we will see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It uh, looks like it's kind of again 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 little, uh, little, little lines in between. So what is that going to mean? Well, that means that each one of these little spaces in between represents 0.2 or 0 0.2, right? We got we take a look, we have 2.2, 2.4, 2.6, 2.8, 3, 3.2, 3.4, 3.6, 3.8, and 4. All right, so if we take a look here, uh, and if we want to determine what the volume of the water is inside of here, we have to get really close and take a very close look. We can see that this is 16.2, 16.4, 16.6, 16.8, 16.9, 16.10, 16.11, Right? So we know that the water inside of this graduated cylinder takes up 16.8. And if we take a look even closer, if you zoom in, you can see that that red dashed line is just a little bit past this little mark on the graduated cylinder. So we'll call this 16.81 milliliters. And once again, this hundredths place is going to be a little bit uncertain. We had to estimate that. However, these two right here, the 16 and the 8, are going to be uh, measured with 100% accuracy. Let's take a look at this next one. First thing we have to do is, is take a look at how our graduated cylinder is calibrated. And if we take a look, it's a little bit different than this one over here. If we take a look, the units on each of these big lines is, uh, is, is 1, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. And if we take a look, we have 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Right, so if we take a look, each one of these little lines represents 0.1. So if you're asked to determine what the volume of the water in this graduated cylinder is, well, we know with 100% certainty it's 4 milliliters. And if we get really close, we can see it's 4.1, 4.2, 4 4.3. We know with 100% certainty it's 4.3 milliliters. And if you Zoom in and take a look really close. It looks like this is directly on that little line right there. So we'll call this 4.30 milliliters, right? So once again, we know that the, uh, 
the ones place here is, has been measured with 100% certainty. We know that the tens place has been measured with 100% certainty. And this right here is a little bit uncertain. We had to estimate this right here. Okay, so when using a graduated cylinder to measure the volume of a liquid, first determine the degree to which your graduated cylinder is calibrated, and then go from there. And make sure you always measure from the bottom of the meniscus. Let's now take a look at how we're going to measure the mass of objects using a digital scale. All right, let's learn how we're going to measure the mass of objects using a digital scale. The first thing you're going to do with these digital scales is you're going to want to turn them on, pressing the little on or off button. So you're going to go ahead and press this. You're going to hit the little on button. And before you place the ball on this little scale here, what you want to do is you want to zero out your scale. Okay, so after you're done turning on the digital scale, you'll hit the zero. And then you'll wait for the display to show 0, 0.0. 0, 0 grams. Second thing you want to do is figure out uh, to what level of precision your digital scale is, is using. Let's take a look. We see that this di digital scale right here looks like it's measuring objects to the thousandth place, right? Measuring objects to the thousandth place. Here's the tenths place, the hundredths place, and the thousandths place. Okay, so once you figure those two things out, and uh, once you've zeroed out your scale, you can go ahead and put the ball on this scale right here, like we see over here, and you'll wait for it to read the mass of that object, and you'll see it displayed right here on the display. Apparently, this ball has a mass of 50.654 grams. And when we record this data in a data table or uh, in a graph, uh, we want to make sure that we, we include all three of these places, the thousandth place. Okay, so. That is how we're going to measure the mass of different objects using the digital scales. That is how we're going to measure the length using uh, the meter sticks. And that is how we're going to measure uh, liquid or the volume of liquids using the graduated cylinder. So if you like what you see, go ahead and click the little bomb in the bottom right-hand corner. And I hope this was helpful.